Welcome to Weekend Watercolor Series episode number four. It's nice to get outside here and do a little bit of plain air painting. Uh, a little bit uh, cloudy uh, this uh, early evening, late afternoon, uh, but uh, we'll have to imagine the light here a little bit and some shadows and uh, see we, we, what we can get done with this uh, barn, this little cattle farm right here. So I've done a little bit of uh, preliminary drawing here on the uh, 16 by 12 or 12 by 16 uh, arches rough paper. And uh, so a little planning is involved here, what I'm going to put in, what I'm going to uh, leave out. There's a lot of trees in the way of the barn that's kind of blocking the view here, so I'm going to leave those out. Uh, there's distant mountains and the trees which will frame this nicely. There's a road uh, on the uh, north boundary, the left boundary here, and a road right in front of me. I'm across the road actually in a little uh, pull off, and that's where I'm going to be painting from. So let's give it a go. So here we are. We've got the uh, preliminary drawing done here, and uh, I've got the camera looking over my left here, shoulder here, so hopefully I won't get in the way as much as usual and uh, block what I'm doing here. I'm just going to start with a uh, little cobalt blue for the sky here. I'm going to pre-wet it like I normally do here. Just quickly throw some water on here. It's a little colored, so and that's just from mixing the color here on my palette before I got started. So I've got that in there and I'll wipe it off. Make sure I'm not going to get any green on there. Like that. And that's about all I'm going to do with that. And these plain air paintings, I don't always get them completed on site because there's some, you know, sometimes you look at them afterwards and uh, you notice some things that you wanted to uh, add or that you forgot. So we'll get this done here. Here and it looks like I, looks like I want that a little bit stronger. So I'm going to get in here, mix it a little bit more of this cobalt blue here, and come across the top again like that, and then down into there like that. And I've got I'm going to put a little bit of red into my blue here, just to change the hue, change the tone of that a little bit there. I'm not going to mess with it too much here. Clean that up a little bit there. And then maybe a little bit of a orangey color here just for the bottom, but I don't want it. I'm just gonna I think I got enough on my brush here that it's gonna yeah, just a little bit. And then into the mountain here. I'm just gonna run that right down into here and I'm gonna cut around this barn here. I'm going to preserve the white in here. I know it's kind of cloudy outside right now. So, but I'm going to preserve this little uh, steel bin right here, the color of that, and cut around that. Yeah, the noises you hear are some cows. It's feeding time out there, and they're having some hay in their feeder. So you might hear some uh, grunting and whatnot, some carrying on. And the little calves out there are crossing the other side of the field and they're they're jumping around having a good old time. There, just like that. So I'm cutting around that. And so you'll, notice, uh, you'll notice out if you paint outdoors, the uh, colors are so much easier to see than in the photographs. And of course you're looking at a lot bigger uh, subject that you're painting compared to looking at an iPad or a photograph in the studio so that's that's nice and you never run out of subject matter when you're if you're drawing this and you come across and you run out of photograph well there's a, there's always more that you can put in your painting um, when you're playing air painting so you, you never run out there so that's about all i'm going to do there i could put in some little distant clouds i think i will because there's some over the little mountain over there and i just put just some hints of them in there, just to give it some interest on this side here, maybe a little bit more build up, something up here, but I don't want to do too much. 
there that's about it the other thing you'll notice about painting outdoors is that your painting dries a lot faster because you got the wind blowing on it and uh, uh, sometimes you're painting it's in the sun and uh, it's a drying out your painting as well so there that's about it there so I'm pretty much done with the big brush and I'll stick it in a little there's a little holder here in my uh, plain air pro uh, easel and see what I want to do next here I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the barn quite yet because the sky's not dry and I just noticed here that I just I need to cut around this a little bit better than I did so I'm not leaving these little white highlights in there this is going to be trees in behind so I can always take the trees down into that anyway I'm just thinking so so it's good to plan your painting like that as well because you're before you put your brush on your paper you kind of want to know what you're doing I might just leave that just like that that might be all that that's going to need there so I'm kind of looking at my drawing more than I'm looking across there at the at the real scene so the next thing I'm going to do is put in some of these um, what should I do here I put the mountain in here first and it's kind of a big area so the mountain I'm, it's actually covered in snow across there because it's quite tall quite high up so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of a greenish cool color here and I loaded up my brush by being careful loading it up rolling it around my palette here I know I'm gonna want to go darker on this here that's the first thing that I'm seeing with what's going on and it kind of disappears and these trees come up to here there so that's not dark enough so I'm gonna see what color I got some leftover colors on my palette here some browns I'm gonna gray that off and then add a little bit of uh, cobalt blue to it and we'll see we're gonna get much stronger here than we were before I don't want that to bloom too much and I'm just gonna make that disappear into there kind of cold outside here this late afternoon it's about I think it's about 4 30 come in here and darken I don't want that color it's a little bit too warm for that so I'm gonna go over it here I'm gonna come over this tree here like that and normally I don't like to overwork this kind of area here but it's all still very wet so it doesn't it's not gonna really do a whole lot I'm gonna take that right over there and then I'm gonna have trees there anyway leave that kind of foggy business going on down there and uh, get a little bit of my burgundy yellow ochre and uh, Put some of that into this mountain a little bit here and there. And then I'm going to go in and put a little bit of darker kind of along the top edge here. You notice I'm not worrying about these trees that are in the foreground too much here. And you kind of have to paint over them because if you come up and stop right at the edge of the tree and then move over, you're going to be in trouble with some weird uh, hard lines. There, I'm going to leave that there like that. And then, uh, let's see here. Everything's kind of gray this time of year, but I think we're going to brighten it up. This is going the distance here. That's supposed to be a cow there, so I'll try to preserve it. And not paint over it too much. Just like that there. Once you got the base color in here, 
Make sure that I don't have my head in the way of the camera. Once the base color is in here and then your, your paper is wet with this color, then you can adjust your tone. This is supposed to be a tractor here, but I kind of It'll have to be a suggestion of a tractor, I think. I'm going to come across to here like that. Right there. As I said, I'm across the road, so you'll hear some traffic going by here, and uh, I feel fairly safe. I got my big truck beside me here, so. That was a little quinacridone gold. next here. I think I'm going to put some more green into this field here. I'm not going to worry about these poles because I really want to do that and have this start coming out here like that. A lot more intense. I might even do some Interesting. Kind of purpley color into here. And then once that dries it a little bit more here. I can splat do a little bit of splattering and that'll make all the difference here. Burgundy yellow ochre and it coming in here. Trying to leave that tree there a little bit to not go over it too much. Just use my finger. And bring that down into here. Cut around this extra little building shape over there. And then get a little darker with my grasses, like in here. When you get your darks in there, that's when your light's really going to start to pop. Yeah, a good time to throw that splatter in there. And I got a little bit, mixing up a little bit of quinacridone gold here, and then we're going to do the same here. splatter trying to get not to get too much into my painting and my sky up here There's gonna be a bunch of trees in there anyway so it's gonna be okay now if I go in and splatter the water now it's a little bit too early I want the colors to mix on the paper here So the thing I've seen is the, the sky here has gotten a little bit darker than I wanted it, but it's still wet, I think, so I'm just going to get some of that off like that. And it just came in from my mountains. This front is going to be quite dark here anyway. It's actually the building, as you probably saw in the opening shot here, is uh, open. Uh, you can see all the way through it to those trees and behind, but I thought I would close it off because I didn't. I painted this once before. and. Uh, it was a bit of an adventure because the uh, my easel blew over three times in the wind, but since then I got a big lead cannonball that I tie underneath the easel to keep it in one position, keep it from falling over. Yeah, I want a little bit more splatter in this area here where the field is. Check the sky. And like that. And then now's a good time just to go in with some water. I can see it's dry. Drying quite quickly down the bottom there. And you put the water in, you can see what happens 
paint what you have here, what you've already painted in here, it's going to kind of bloom just like uh, grasses and things. And you can't, you know, you can go in. It's a little bit early to be doing this with the grasses here and this kind of detail, but it's getting a little darker out. You got to be careful you don't do it too much because you kind of, if you push too hard in the wet paper, you can damage the paper. I think I'm going to go in and do some of these trees here now. So once you got these trees wet, I think that actually it's too wet there to do the trees, but I can go from the I'll go from the top here. I don't want to get in the way of the camera. I'll do this one here first. And then come all the way down into there. And there's all it's all wet, so it's gonna to start to bloom in kind of this area. It's doing that here. Stick a tree up there, and we'll come down here. Do it like that there. And then, so once that's wet, then you could start dropping even darker kind of colors into here. And the thicker your paint is, the less it's really going to bloom into your background here. So I've done that there. I'm going to be careful not to put my hand into it. And then you can just keep building on your, your colors that you're putting, you're putting on to this tree here. These tree trunks. I like this. This quinacridone burnt orange. It's nice to add. It's a good, nice color to mix in with other colors. Yeah. See, I went in a little bit too early here. Normally, when I got more time, I just let this dry. But I'm going to come across here and pull down on this. You can see there. That'll be okay like that, I think. This one's getting a little fuzzy on the outside, but also there like that. And then we get some we get some little branches and things coming off of this tree right here. And they kind of stop right about there. So here, this one's the same way. Just gives the, the bark a little bit of detail there. And there are some other branches that are coming off of these trees here. And I've just got to pick the, the right time to do that. I think we're going to go ahead and do the background here first. Put in some of these trees into here. I'm going to start over, I guess, on this side here. They come up here. Down there, that kind of area there. And we'll overlap that a little bit into here. And then to the other one. Bring them right down. So instead of putting in that road, I think I'm just going to put a row of trees in there and it'll look better. Put a little more color into these here and just let them run down. Just keep an eye on those. So I'm going to make sure that they don't run down into the other parts I've already painted here. Put some interesting colors in these trees here. Well, that's not bad. I can leave that sliver of road kind of in there. And the... I'm go with a little bit smaller brush here. It's a bit of a large brush to be doing that with there. And I'm just going to maybe 
Just wonder what to do with this road here, but clean that up a little bit. A little darker in this one. Cut around that little, lovely little bin over here. And we'll leave it bright and I'll do another one in here. Like that. Coming around. Still wet in there, so I'll just drop some extra darks in there. That'll work very well. That'll work well. And then coming down here, right up to the roof line, I'll stick that tree in there. We have another hint of one there. Oh, I see she started the tractor up over there. She's got the interest of the little calves. Nice thing about paint and plein air too, you usually get some entertainment and people love stopping by and chatting, which is nice, except I have to explain to them that I have to keep painting and not being rude by not <laughs> engaging too much in conversation until I'm done with certain sections of the painting. and. <laughs> And fella stopped by on a motorcycle last time I was painting here and I was just putting in that background mountain in there. So. Yeah, I'm going right across into there like that. There's some taller trees into here too. I kind of leave them like this. And get, becomes a little bit more atmospheric in this area here and it's probably going to want to I mean it when talking about the painting is going to want me to come down to about here I'm thinking hey, there and if I cut around that building there and they come around here interesting stuff you just got to pick where your horizon line is kind of going to be it's got to got to start somewhere so I've seen this is come down here and it's still wet so I can just kind of do a few things with it here like that and then these trees. Now this is getting darker here on this side so I'm going to go ahead, I mean drier on the right side so I'm going to go darker on the one side and the right side here. We'll make like the, we'll make like the lights coming from this way here because I want to light up that uh, roof. I want to leave it bright, so it's probably pretty good there. Going in with some nice, real darks into here. And that'll give it a nice contrast too from the background up there. You don't have to worry about that as much and leave them a little bit brighter. Put a little bit of darker splatters in there and to here and change the color a little Some more little purpley splatters I think I'm gonna go in afterwards too and then work on that mountain when I get back to the studio because it's a little bit faint but we can see how it kind of turns out at the end Putting in a little bit more interest into here. And you can negative paint into here too. Like if you got, you put a little darks in there, and then you can use the end of your brush or the corner of a card or something or a palette knife, and you can get in there and do that. And then over here. And I'm going to go really dark into here. I don't really want that light to start popping. 
but I'm going to add some color to it. That was just some neutral gray that I put in there. And there, and I'm going to start working on this kind of building area into here. I'm going to go really dark into here. I can leave a little bit of light highlights in there. And I can drop in some other colors in there. Make it interesting. And then once that's a little drier, I can drop in. Actually, you could probably do some now. Just drop in some darks right in the corner there. This building is kind of a yellow color, like bare wood in the, in the front here. So kind of trying to decide what uh, color to actually make it. You can kind of go, I can start with this orangey kind of color here. It is about the barn, this painting. So go in here, I'm going to cover all of that with this orangey color. I cut around my little calf here. And then these parts, this is kind of closed in too. I'm going to go right into that and I'm going to close that in as well, down into here. And then I'm going to add some darks right under here and let that come down. There, I added some more brown to it because I didn't really like the color of the building being orange. So I think I like it a lot better now. We'll see what see what happens. This one over here, I'm just gonna put in some raw umber, I think it is, over here. Just add a little bit under here. Leave that as is right there. I'm going to come in here just in between the two roof lines and carefully put that in. Put that there, and I'm just going to tie that in just like that. down here. This is an open, sorry for the traffic noise, this getting to be close to five o'clock I think so everybody's going home. There's a bunch of acreages down the road here that uh, where I presume all these people are going. Now these, the roof reflections are about, uh, I'm sorry, the roofs are reflecting the sky, which is quite blue, so I'm just going to go in with a little bit of kind of grayish blue here and do both. That's about all I'm going to do, and then I'm going to put in a little dark line under this. Soffit here, let that come down. This is open here, like I said, so I'm going to darken that, put that in a, a bit more in the shade. Same with this part here. Add a few darks. This shouldn't be this right over here, so I'm just going to take it out here. Mm 
just like that. Okay, so let's continue on here. I've just changed my water and I want to put some more darks into here while this is still wet. And just let that run down. Into there like that. And I can darken this even a little bit more in that area there. And if you leave the light in the right hand corner in here, it'll look like it's lights coming in from outside or there's a light inside uh, giving you some interest into that area there. Leave that about like that. Now these trees here have some branches that are kind of going every direction here. So this one starts kind of over into here. That's a good one. So when you're doing branches, you kind of want to do these little stutter strokes. You don't want to do them all at once. If you leave a gap, it's okay too. Don't do, don't do them all at once. Go a little darker here on some of these. And they don't all grow. You know, if you do them all growing straight across, it'll look weird or up and down. Some of these can go like this and they're right off of the Read right off of the painting kind of area, so now it can be like that. A little, little bit more pigment, and I'm going pretty strong. These, these branches are pretty dark. And they kind of go all the way up here. I'm looking at these trees for reference. It's always a good idea to look at them because you can easily... I have a poor imagination when it comes to branches. If I don't look at a tree and figure out which way they're going and what not, and then just kind of paint all the same ones. And this is what takes time when you're out here. The brush is getting a little dry. There, that's probably enough because I'm going to go over it with, uh, just notice this is not that dark anymore here in this area. I'm going to go over it with uh, some nice green to put some, some pine needles on there. There, nice and quiet right now. This is a rattlesnake country, so in the in the summertime they're not out yet. It's too cold still, but especially up in the hills here. But uh, I like to wear cowboy boots in the summertime, just in case. But rattlesnakes are kind of shy creatures. They want to stay away from you mostly, so you. Unless you step on them, then they're not so shy anymore. I still give them a lot of respect. <laughs> so I put in this extra dark into this left tree here. So I'm just going to put in a little bit more color into there. And see I had that hard line and then now it's disappeared. Same with that one there, like that. All right, that's looking good. <clears throat> Let me go in here and get some little more quinacridone gold here. I'm gonna break up that color a little bit here. You know this detail stuff, I think I might leave that for the uh, studio a little bit later. The guy on a bicycle going by. This is, uh, I believe this is the route for one of the bicycle races they have in the uh, triathlons and whatnot in the summertime here. So you see a lot of uh, road bikes going by. And then 
All right, let's go ahead and do these pine needles here. I kind of didn't bring the right brush to do this, but, but let's see how these work out here. I'm going to start at the top here. You need your bristles and your brush to separate a little bit when you're doing this and it's kind of hard on the brushes so if you've got a old brush you can do this with it's better. And with this beginning here these this greenery the pine needles you can always just drop some more colors into them too and then uh, do some little kind of detail work in different spots here. Working out not bad at all. I get in here and do this one here. I'm going to take it right off the page just like that. And then with that I'm going to drop in some more darks into here, all dark colors. I feel like I'm really abusing this brush. This is not that old a brush either, but it's all in the name of plain air painting. I'm going to get the job done. That's how you also fix the mistakes and things that you don't like. Put a tree in front of it. Trees and birds, fabulous. Splattering always helps. that into there. I'll put some birds in there, you never know. I'm going to cover some of the parts of this tree trunk here. You kind of, you kind of know when to stop. You have a little voice in your head that goes, that's too much. up just another Pernacondo and gold again. I never used to use the color very much. And I like to mix with it. I have to go down into here, tie this in, get rid of that light, that bright light over there. There, and that's about it. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into this mountain over here and maybe fix that up a little bit now that everything is drier but I need to change my water so I'll be right back. Now I've gone ahead and I've mixed up some some cool gray and I'm going to come across this mountain here again I'm, I'm going to have to repaint some of these trees into here but that's okay and actually I'm going to leave that right there. The mountain actually just goes in here behind some of these trees so I'm going to start right here and then I'm going to take it down into like there to there and there and then the right side here I'm just going to come in just blend that in a little bit and fix my sky splatters into here. And throw in some burgundy yellow ochre into here a little bit. And there, much happier with that. And then I can 
Just add a little bit of water into the bottom of it here and it'll blend in nicely into these trees. And you can leave some little highlights there. Much better. Much better contrast back there. Another car. And then I believe that's about it to, uh, for here. And I'm going to finish this in the studio. What I'm going to do is maybe put some more trees in here until that uh, kind of looks, a, um, you know, a little bit more contrast and frames in this barn better. I'm going to work on detail on the barn. Yeah, you know, you can always scratch in some details into a painting like that if you don't mind using your fingers. Or, you know, you use a palette knife or something else do that with and I'll have a look at it then and uh, see what uh, it wants and uh, thanks for joining me out here today it's nice to get out and do some plain air painting and it's getting cold out so I'm gonna go home and uh, we'll finish it there have a great day thanks for watching